Hello and welcome to our latest Sea to Sweater video. Today we're going to be thinking about how to dye our own yarn or fabric using woad. When using woad you need to use it immediately after harvesting so this shouldn't be left laid around for too long. To harvest simply snip off the leaves on the outside that are the oldest on the plant. If you leave the nice young leaves in the centre, it should hopefully allow the plant to get nice and bushy again so that you can keep dying more and more. You also need to make sure when you're harvesting that you harvest your woad at a particularly sunny time of the year, not when it's being cold or rainy, because this allows more pigment to come out of the plant. And obviously we want as much pigment as possible so that our dye is really nice and impactful. Once you've harvested some woad, you need to make sure that you weigh it. You want about a ratio of two to one woad to yarn. That means for 200 grams of woad, you'll be able to dye 100 grams of yarn or fabric. As you can see here, after weighing, we discovered we'd harvested around 120 grams of woad. This wasn't quite enough as we were planning to dye about 100 grams of yarn. So I went back and harvested another 80 so that I got up to that 200 grams of woad which gave us that two to one ratio. You then can begin preparing the woad for the dye process. So at this point you basically just need to rip or cut the woad into smaller more manageable pieces. This makes it easier to extract the pigment out of it. It isn't totally necessary so you don't necessarily have to do it if you've got a very large amount of woad that's fine but it might just take a bit longer for you to then extract the pigment later. While you're doing this, it's also really important that you prepare your yarn. Now, you don't need to add any sort of mordants or chemicals of any kind. You simply just need to take your yarn, wash it with some nice wool soap, whichever wool soap you normally use, so that it's damp, not wet, when you begin the actual dyeing process. So once you've ripped up your leaves and you've washed your wool, you can now start creating your dye. To do this, you need to measure out a good amount of salt. I used about two handfuls for 200 grams of woad. Once you've got that, all you need to do is basically scrunch together the leaves until they start to break down and sort of wilt a little bit. You'll start to notice as the woad begins to wilt down that it begins to release some liquid. You want to make sure that you've got lots and lots of liquid in the base before you start adding your yarn to it. So as you can see here, I've squeezed out quite a lot of liquid now and that liquid is a really nice green colour, which is exactly what we want. So now it's time for you to add your yarn to your dye. So simply pop that yarn in and then very carefully you need to move it around in the dye and cover it in as much liquid as you can. Now this does need to be done quite carefully because wool is obviously quite delicate. You don't want to start felting it and making it really unpleasantly fluffy because that will obviously impact your final product and will not be as nice to use once you start knitting and crocheting it up. So you need to be nice and careful with it. You might also find that 
because you've used your hands in the dye pot your fingers and your fingernails especially end up going a little bit bluey green it's totally normal it comes off quite quickly um so don't panic it's not a problem as you leave your wool out to dry you will notice that it starts going from quite a vibrant green to a wonderful blue color once the yarn has dried you can take it in just a bit of cold water and wash out those bigger pieces of woad. You don't need to add any sort of wool soap or anything to it at this point. It's just a bit of a rinse to get rid of those big chunky pieces. Then you can take your yarn and hang it back out to dry in the sunshine. Once it's dried, you should end up with a really beautiful, really unique shade of blue, somewhat like ours. It could be a little bit lighter or darker, depending a bit on how much sun you've had recently, and how much pigment was in your woad. If you're feeling adventurous, you can also try dyeing your wool a soft yellow colour beforehand using some of your other dye flowers and then dyeing the woad on top, which should give you a really nice vibrant green colour, which will complement this blue really, really well. Thank you so much for watching our Cita sweater video. I really hope that you have enjoyed it and that you have learnt how to dye with woad. Make sure that you share your results with us over on Instagram using the hashtag seed to sweater and tagging us at hook and light. We will once again be choosing a winner for the best photograph of the dyeing section of our seed to sweater journey over on Instagram.